the uh, title of this talk is uh, The Internet of Things by the Numbers. And so let's start with the important number. How many objects can we connect to the internet? The answer is a lot. Trust me, I'm an economist. This has been a very, very peculiar technological revolution because it's been so focused on one aspect of the economy. In the past, when we've had a technological revolution, they've been very distributed over different sectors. So if you go back to the uh, early 20th century, what you see is not just radio, but you also see evolution of transportation in terms of cars and airplanes. You see evolution of energy, or really revolutions in terms of electricity and internal combustion. You see in medicine, antibiotics. So those were all broad-based technological revolutions, and that's really what you need to generate jobs and rising living standards. Not just a focused technological revolution, but one which is broader. Uh, we call this pro-growth progressivism. It's neither Democratic or Republican, but progressive in the truest sense of moving forward. And that's what we mean by the Internet of Things. The extension of the Internet to the physical world is a huge step forward because the physical world is where we live. Now I'm going to come to the first number, which is 20%. 20% is my estimate of the percentage of GDP that comes from digital industries. That is, industries where the output is primarily data or information. That includes publishing, it includes finance, it includes everything that has to do with the internet, it includes education to a large part. But that means that 80% of the economy is physical industries, manufacturing, transportation, public service, healthcare, industries where the primary output is physical. What's happened is that the internet up to this point has been about transforming digital industries. What the internet of things will do is transform the physical industries. Now we come to our second number. Our second number is 0.5%. 0.5% is the productivity gain for 2013 over 2012. Very slow. We cannot have viable growth, viable living standards, a viable political debate while our productivity growth is that slow. We need it up more like 1.5% or even 2%. And one way to think of what's happening is that we have been able to transform the productivity of our digital industries up to this point, but our physical industries have lagged behind. A lot of what Chris was talking about was examples, and a lot of what we're going to hear later on is examples of transforming the physical parts of our life. It's very difficult. It raises some very important technological questions. It raises some very important regulatory questions but it will make an enormous difference to productivity growth and rising living standards. Finally, my last number here is 6.7%, which is the unemployment rate. We've grown used to thinking about technology as being a job destroyer. But the Internet of Things has the potential of being a job creator. And let me explain how. Right now, we have a skills mismatch. A lot of this unemployment is the result of a skills mismatch between the skills that are needed and the skills that are available in the labor force. Now, why do you have a skills mismatch? You have it because training is so expensive. If you want to train someone right, to a job that mixes cognitive and physical skills, you need a skilled trainer right with them. Now, I wish I had a prop here, but the prop that I'd like to have is an internet-enabled basketball, which was being sold this Christmas called um, uh, the, uh, let me make sure I get this right, called 9450. 
you could buy a basketball where if you dribbled it, it would tell you what you're doing wrong. If you shoot, it will tell you what you could do better. If you set it right, it will yell at you. Now, you could have gotten this before. You could pay $50 or $80 an hour for an individual session with a basketball coach, but that adds up pretty quickly. Once you've bought this basketball, this basketball, maybe slowly, will actually help you improve your game. They make golf clubs like this, too, that will talk to you and tell you what you're doing wrong. Think about, though, the implications. All of a sudden, we've made training something that can be made digital, that can be extended to everyone, that can be made cheaper. We've, once you change the economics of training in this economy, you really change an enormous amount about the labor market, both from the point of view of the employer and the point of view of the potential employee. Think about the Internet of, of Things as something as extending the benefits of internet-led internet -led growth, internet-led innovation to the 80% of the economy that's physical, Think of it as a job creator and not a job destroyer. And that will summarize what the economic effects are. Thank you.